Welcome to In The Workshop, and no matter how I say this, it's going to sound like a double entendre. Dribbling drain cocks. Oh, and fitting a hand pump. Or it could be, dribbling drain cocks, Batman. And to start off the video, the ball fell out of the fitting and went on the floor. I attached a piece of silicone rubber to the drain cock, and once I opened it, the water ran out. I need the boiler completely empty for this job. I'm going to show you how to seal a dribbling drain cock. These type of drain cocks really look good. They're not quite as efficient as a rotary tap, but they look the part. In my hallway, mounted on a stand, I have a pair of water gauges and a pressure gauge from a full-size Lancashire boiler, and the drain cocks on these full-size water gauges look very much like this one, except much bigger. This type of drain cock is a very simple device. A tapered plug in a tapered hole and there's a small hole in the middle of it to let the water out once the handle is turned to the correct position. This is a very old drain cock that I found in a box in the workshop, and the ravages of time and lime scale from the water and bits of grit have taken their toll on it. I'll enlarge the image so you can see how badly scored the plug is. The socket is going to be equally badly scored. What I'm going to show in this video is an attempted repair. I'm going to relap the plug into the socket, and I'm using T-cut for this. T-cut is an abrasive compound normally used on motor vehicles for restoring the paint colour. And what I'm doing here is applying some T-cut to the plug. Then all I have to do is put the tapered part of the cock back into the socket, and do this for quite a long time. Run it back and forth and round and round, and with the help of the T-cut this should polish both of the surfaces but it's not making much of an impression, so I'm going to try some of this. This is valve grinding paste for grinding car valves in on cylinder heads. In the tin there are two grades, fine and coarse. This is the fine stuff. I'm also mixing it with some more tea cut. And after the first intense rotation of the plug, it's starting to look a little bit better, but it needs a bit more yet. So more tea cut and repeat the procedure. Again and again and again. And for the few viewers who take the time and trouble to write in and ask me to display the speed of the video on screen when the video is running above normal speed, here it is, just for you. Personally, I find 400% on screen to be very distracting, so I'm going to remove it. I don't want to leave a lot of grinding compound inside the hole, so I'm flushing it out now and again with some machine oil. A few observations about doing this job. Initially, I was going to use a taper reamer in the hole. I've done this before, but with limited success. These drain cocks are very, very small indeed. Don't forget, you're looking at this highly magnified. If you look at the size of my fingers, you get some idea how small this part is. I once used a taper reamer on a dribbling drain cock hole, and it did a good job, except that then the plug fell through the hole, but never mind. I'm going to finish this operation with some Brasso. This is Brasso wadding, which contains a very, very fine abrasive, and hopefully this should get some kind of a seal. The plug part of the taper is looking quite good. I assume that the socket part of the taper is looking equally as good. I'm going to flush it a few more times with the machine oil. I've done this kind of job quite a lot in the past. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it isn't. But this particular drain cock was dripping like a running tap. The drain cocks on my small locomotive that I run round the garden now and again are slightly different to this. They don't have the fancy handle, and there is a spring at the end where the nut is, which holds the taper plug in place. After relapping this particular taper plug and socket, which was very badly scored, now it's a rattle fit. Can you see this? It's moving back and forth. This is no good. So the answer is to use a washer, but I didn't have any washers the right size. The video on screen shows how I got round that. I filed out the centre of a very small brass washer using a needle file, and now I'm cleaning it up on a piece of wetted dry sandpaper. It's always important to remove burrs. Burrs can get in the way. In this case, if I don't remove the burr, when I tighten the nut in no time at all, the burr's going to wear away and it will be slack again. Now it's time to fit this washer, followed by the washer with the square centre, followed by the nut to hold everything in place. But first, a little machine oil. This is very difficult to film because my hands are in the way most of the time, and I'm sorry about this, but I can't actually do the job and get the camera in the right position. It's difficult enough fitting all these small parts together without having to constantly look at the camera viewfinder whilst I'm doing it. 
When I was editing this part together, it amazed me how many clips I had of this. It took a lot longer than you're seeing on here, and this is speeded up 400%. Finally, I managed to get the nut to engage with the thread on the main shaft. And with the help of a small spanner, I tightened the small nut just the correct amount. Not too tight and not too slack. And now it's time to test the drain cock. Using compressed air, I pumped up the boiler to just under blowing off pressure, which is about 65 psi. And the drain cock is leaking. It's not leaking very much at all, and maybe with water it would be slightly better, but leaking nevertheless. I put some oil on, and this is showing me that it's not 100% tight. I did have my doubts right at the beginning because this drain cock was very badly worn. I really can't do with dribbling drain cocks, so I removed it and put it back in the box where I found it in the first place. Then I tried a selection of other drain cocks, but none of them looked right or they didn't fit. So then I had an idea. First of all, I fitted a blanking plug in place of the drain cock. I removed the small blanking plug at the front of the lower part of the water gauge and I looked at the clack valve. I'd fitted a drain cock to this when it didn't really need it, I just didn't have a small blanking plug. But now, courtesy of the lower part of the water gauge, I have a blanking plug that can be fitted into the clack valve. So I did just that. Here's me fitting the small blanking plug into the clack valve, and here I'm using my barco spanner to carefully fit the blanking plug into the clack valve. So now, as you can see, the clack valve has a blanking plug and the water gauge has a drain cock, and this drain cock doesn't dribble in the slightest, as can be seen here in this quick air test. At this point I have to say it, a dribble free drain cock is a very good thing. On screen at the moment is my Patreon address, and I'm very pleased to say that currently, on the 16th of September 2017, I have 225 Patreon subscribers, and I'd like to thank each and every one of them. Thank you. Statistics can be quite interesting. 225 paying subscribers pledging a dollar upwards, and an average of 31,000 views of my videos each and every day. It should get better over time though, I think. I'm currently fitting a water pump. I've silver soldered the nuts and unions onto the water pipe, and now it's time to fit the pump to the baseboard. What I'm doing is I'm drilling some holes in the baseboard that correspond exactly with the holes in the bottom of the pump. And I'm using a number 48 drill for this. A number 48 drill is a good size for tapping a 6BA hole. This baseboard isn't much to write home about, it's the one that came with the boiler, so I'm using it for the moment. When I've finished experimenting with gas burners, and I finally arrive at the one I'm going to use with this boiler, I'm going to remount the whole system. As this is a very good quality marine type boiler, it would be ideal for fitting in a model of an open steam launch. So I'll probably make a brass ladder frame to support the whole assembly, including possibly an engine. More about that later. This is a really good tip. After drilling and threading the holes in the baseboard, put a drop of cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue in each hole. And then use a sharp pointed instrument I'm using a needle file to make sure that the cyanoacrylate adhesive runs down into each of the holes, because normally it stays on top. And then, this is the important part, wait until the cyanoacrylate adhesive is fully set. Then you can screw the bolts in. The cyanoacrylate adhesive, or superglue as it's better known, soaks into the fibres of the wood that are threaded and makes the thread really solid. This is not my original tip. It's something that comes from building radio-controlled model aircraft. It's time now to fit the water inlet pipe. And all this is, is a bent piece of copper pipe, with a steam union silver soldered on the end of it. Time now to test the water pump and make sure that it pumps water into the boiler. And I've really speeded this one up because it took a long time to fill the boiler. It's only a 5 16 of an inch ram. And it's okay for topping up the boiler, but it takes a while when the boiler is fully empty. This part of the video is now running in real time, and you can see that for every stroke of the pump, the water does go up the glass a little way. That's just about it for this episode of In The Workshop, and I'd like to think that you're much wiser on the subject of how to deal with dribbling drain cocks. Generally, buy a new one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.